I find that in most countries which are large or which are strong civilizations, the youth are very well informed. They are psychologically very fit, emotionally very tough. They are not looking that we feel good, we will be crying, we will be crying, we will be crying, we will be emotional. They are not so fragile. They are robust, strong people and they are organized also. Like in, uh, in US campuses, there are a lot of Indian students, there are also a lot of Chinese students. I was just having a discussion with uh, one, one young woman just a few days ago, Indian, who is in one of these universities, she was here for a holiday. Ki what is the difference between the Indian students and Chinese students? So she says, if there is any issue, the Chinese will always stick together. If they, and the Indians will make sure they bring each other down. So one of the, one of the practices in, the, in that university is that each student is evaluated by the other students. They have a peer review. So you write a paper, not only teacher will evaluate, but other students will also evaluate. Everybody is evaluated by each other. So she was saying ki Chinese will always give the Chinese good benefit of doubt. Stick together. Indian will go out of his way to bring the Indian down. This is true. How can we build a nation like this? About uh, 20 years ago, there was a very India friendly governor of New Jersey, where I live, in state of New Jersey. So when he became, ele got elected, he asked what are, what do you, what do the Indian community want? So the different people wanted different things. They generally wanted very selfish things. Somebody wanted lottery license, somebody wanted some, you know, benefit. So Mary, but jab turn, I, I said, I want nothing for myself. But the school curriculum is very European oriented, world history, European history. They don't teach much about Asia, but the future is Asia. And American students should learn about Asia. It will be better for them. So he appointed an Asian Studies Commission and made me the chairman. And there was a member from each country, Chinese, Chinese, Mongolian, Japanese, Vietnamese, Myanmar people, Cambodia, all kind of people. And I was the chairman. So when we started having our meetings regularly, I would propose that uh, we should create a history of Asia and its uh, importance to the Americans. And I put things like uh, spread of Sanskrit throughout Asia as a topic. Like in Europe, they talk about spread of Latin. And they have a course in European history on how the great European empires conquered so many places. So I said we should have a topic on the spread of Buddhism without conquest. The spread of Buddhism without military. The only opposition I got was from the two other Indians. They were always saying, sir, what about the caste system? We have to put that. What about those women they are burning in India? We have to put that. Malab, they wanted only negative things. Now, I didn't know what to do. So one day, a Chinese lady who was on this commission, she came to me and said, you know, let us meet in your house without these two fellows and come up with a plan. Chinese lady. So, mere ghar mein, Chinese ko bulaya, Japanese ko bulaya, Myanmar ka tha, ek, Thailand ka tha, ek, Vietnamese, Cambodian, ye sab log the. To humare ghar mein baith ke, lunch khaya, baitak hui. And we, everybody, so I asked people ki ye do humne topics positive Asia ke baare mein lagai hai. Do you guys agree or not? They all said, we absolutely agree. The, the, when they teach European history, they tell you great things about ye history of this country, that culture, ye wo hua. They don't talk about ke bhi slavery thi, ye tha, wo tha. They, because we are teaching school children, they are fragile. And we have to teach them positive ideas about identity. We don't want uh, that uh, Asian students sitting in class to be embarrassed. So all of them agreed. So I said, we have, how to deal with these two Indian? So this, uh, there was a lady from uh, Vietnam and there was one from Myanmar in this committee. So one of them said, you should not say it, we will raise this issue. So next meeting may, 
I sat quietly, but all the ideas I had put in, these other people from other countries, they discussed, they put it to vote, they said we support it. And those two Indians were so shocked and so embarrassed that they are the only negative people. After that, they stopped coming. We, we got rid of them. So this is the problem I face all my life, the, that I may win, but then in the end, some one of our own fellows suffering from inferiority complex, confused, completely messed up, you know, will be having a lot of fun ki usko kuch nikalo, niche lea ho, yes, like that. So this is a very kind of pettiness of our own people. And I think this is a very big war I am now facing. How to be, that battle our own people? Because it's very difficult to emotionally, you know, you love your own people. But if they have this quality, this problem, then what will happen? Either you lead, you don't like to lead, or follow us, we are leading. If you can't do that, then just get out of the way. I have invited me to lecture in foreign service institute in the foreign service institute. It is JNU. It is a foreign service institute. And the Indian diplomats are going to train them there. The Indian diplomats are going to train them there. So when I went to the lecture, I wanted to talk about Indian grand narrative. How to present the India internationally. So I talked about how many topics I talked about on this. And the reaction of his reaction was two different students. Almost 50-50. Half the students were very excited about the topic and they were saying I wish we wish uh, there was more of this discussion our subjects our syllabus has me I see but you see I gave him cop college mini sika I get how many sika I get we are proud of this we want to learn more half of them the other half were very upset that I'm talking like this very upset that I'm talking like this because they felt that their idea was K India is fragmented broken up Koi kaha kao hai, koi dalit hai, koi minority hai, they were not interested in the grand narrative of India. The Foreign Service Institute, where young diplomats are being trained to go and represent India, I found it half of the class was not proud but embarrassed of the good things about India I was saying. And so I thought ki what a, what a, I don't know of any other country where the own diplomats are embarrassed. It, I, I, it is unheard of, but it is fashionable here. You can say you can be a diplomat and then make fun. I mean, I just don't understand. It seems that in the diplomatic selection process, there is no screening for patriotism. It is just marks kitne mene aapko. On the UPSC exam, it's full of anti-India type uh, uh, scholars, their books and I asked one of these fellows who does the coaching of the UPSC exam same thing same material being taught now so that is what is happening if you look at the syllabuses they haven't been changed decolonization is not about Westerners but it's about our people who are continuing the colonial system even though the colonizers are gone. So colonial system is first in the way of thinking, jo categories hai, jo framework hai, jo itihas likha gaya hai, jo siddhant hai, that is from the Western point of view. And us framework may khub sare scholars paida kiye gaye hain. So there is also human resource which is colonized. Not only in universities, not only in media, but also in civil service, foreign service, yes, foreign service, politics, ministers. Old government, new government, all governments, academics, etc. 
So the colonized mindset is very pervasive. So this is how the whole sepoy started. I call them sepoys. British call the people sepoys, whom Indian whom they hire to shoot at other Indians. Nowadays, it's not with guns, it's with the intellectual discourse. I don't see this from Chinese, I don't see this from Japanese, I don't see this from other countries where they are all together moving their nation forward. This is a character issue. We have to really address this character issue. We need people with more tapasya, hard work, better educated, better read. We need so much more. And I found that they are missing. Hai. You cannot win with a weak team. And you cannot have a strong team just by making them very emotional. And your generation has to face lots of these issues. You can't just be that Bollywood, dekh rahe, cricket, dekh rahe, maj kar rahe, theek ho so I don't want to demoralize people, but I want to shake you up that decolonization starts with yourself. You have to shape up, take inventory of your own life and decide what is your contribution to the nation's advancement.